Hey, what's up y'all, How CM here. Today I'm gonna make some scatter train bushes for tabletop role-playing games. Come on, I'll show you. So the first thing I do here is I take some medium weight graphics chipboard and I'm going to cut this oval base shape out of it. I'm not really, you know, going with any major plan here. I'm just kind of trying to make it be as a, as much of a natural looking base as possible that you would maybe assume you would see in a wood somewhere. And once you've cleaned that up, we're going to move on to the next step, which is to use some uh, PVA glue here. I just shake it out and smother the whole thing in it. I'm also going to take one of my crappy paintbrushes and just kind of spread it around with that. I actually find that this is much easier to then work the glue into the chipboard than, I don't know, using something else. And now the fun part, you can take your Talenti gelato container of sand, that's what I store my stuff in, and just dump it on top. If you put enough glue on it, it should stick on, and I just kind of shake off the excess and ends up looking uh, just like this. And I find that the sand and PVA combo adds a little bit of good weight to it and some good texture, and it actually helps it from warping a little bit. So next you're going to grab some polyester stuffing. This is from like a pillow or it might actually be from the um, Halloween cobwebs you get where people put that crap all over the house. Um, and I'm just shaping a bunch of these into what I would assume to be hedge or bush shapes. And just get them ready. Now once your PVA glue is dry, you can go ahead and grab your best hot glue gun you got. Love my hot glue gun and you're gonna just put a little dab, just a dab right there, yeah, that's good. And um, grab that polyester stuffing bush that you made and just stick it on. You'll see I'm gonna do this for the other uh, two as well. And This is meant to kind of obscure vision for my players when they're moving through a wooded area, so I kind of wanted it to be, you know, about the height that you're seeing there, just so that it gives them that sense that they're in like a dense, Foliage covered forest. Foliage covered forest, foliage covered forest, foliage covered forest. So learn from my mistake and next time try to paint your sand first before you glue these on. I definitely did this in the wrong order and it was kind of a pain to go and paint underneath these uh, bushes. You'll see as a, I move on to the spray paint here. State of the art Krylon cheap as you can get. Yeah, I found that the uh, spray paint itself didn't really get underneath the polyester down below, so that was kind of a challenge to uh, reach under that later on. In hindsight, if you just paint it first, then you can use the Krylon for your bush shadow effect. You'll see once we put our flocking on. How many wild strawberry tangerines are there? I don't know. Do you? So now I got this 99 cent eyeglass spray whatever and I mixed it with some PVA glue and water and you're just gonna spritz, spritz it, spritz, 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 spritz. yep. You're just trying to get it to soak in completely. That way when you put your flocking on it'll stick to it no problem. And you can see here I'm using this uh, Woodland Scenics Fine Turf. I find that this stuff just is so good. I think there's different colors too, but I only have this sort of dark green one. Probably get more once I make more of these uh, bush bushes. Bush bushes. Now I'm just covering this entire thing in the flock and you'll see me kind of shake it off and try to get the uh, excess off and I'm just gonna pick up those little tiny bits and just sprinkle it in the the underside of the brush. If you uh, make sure to spray the glue down there you definitely don't want to miss those spots. Now while I'm messing around with the uh, the glue spray and the flock, head on over to Jake House DM on my Instagram account to see some super awesome terrain pictures and story setups of me utilizing my terrain.
All right, do you think we're done yet? Is every single nook and cranny and crevice completely filled with flock? Because it's pretty important that you do, otherwise you'll have some some pretty silly looking polyester showing. Yeah. So this is just some Mod Podge and black paint that I mixed together because I wanted to uh, kind of touch up the sides there. There was a little bit of that chipboard showing. Um, I mentioned earlier on that when you coat this stuff, it helps to prevent it from warping. So I'm just gonna go around the, the rim there and clean it up real quick. And now in these little corners, there was too much of that uh, flocking set there and it, it kind of just blended too easily into it. So I put some Mod Podge there and this is just a little vial of some old tea I had laying around. And I'm actually gonna use this as like a like a dried leaves or you know the dead part of a plant underneath a bush that you'll see often and just sprinkle that right there in that little corner this is going to kind of give it a little bit more dynamic of a look um, this is this step also isn't totally necessary i just wanted to clean that little bit up and kind of break away from all the uh the green wow such detail much bushes forest wow so you can call this done at this point. Um, I think I'm gonna take it a, one step further. I have these highlighted flocking bits that I got online on Amazon somewhere. And uh, I didn't really like how they were by themselves, so I mixed them together into this, uh, this spice jar that I had laying around. And I'm just gonna glue a little bit more on the top and sprinkle all of these on to kind of just, once again, break up that straight green uh, foliage and hopefully when the light hits this on my gaming table it'll be a little bit more dynamic with how that bush looks also just a heads up that glue I sprayed on there treat it kind of like a dry brush don't oversaturate it again that'll kind of soak into the the flocking you already applied and will look a little matted and kind of weird uh, so just you know do it really lightly on the top of the bush you're only needing a little bit for this stuff this stuff is so light All right, last step, nope. Okay, second to last step. We're gonna paint the uh, rim brown. Just like, yep, just like that. And that way it'll kind of blend into my tabletop terrain a little bit better instead of having the, uh, the black rim on the base there. And once that's done drying, this step is optional, but I have it laying around, so might as well use it. You can use this low odor, clear finish, matte Krylon spray canister and just give it a solid top coat. This is going to kind of help to prevent the uh, prevent the flocking from just flaking off from usual play at my table. And that'll do it. Let's jump into a story now. It's dusk. While returning home to Glowendale, you stumbled upon a ruckus in the woods. A band of goblins have taken up residence just outside of town. Shh, quiet. They'll hear us. Ah, come on, we can take them, the young ranger brags. Just then, a group of goblins have returned from scouting the perimeter. You hold your breath as one goblin approaches, having heard something. Squee, come on, the boss is waiting. He thinks we should strike tonight. The goblins discuss while in earshot of you. Now you have a choice. Do you leave and try to warn the guards at your home? Or try to take them all on? Good luck. So there you have it. Now you can have your own scatter terrain bushes kind of break up the battlefield and add a new dynamic to your outside wild adventures. Hopefully this video provided some good value for you and you learned from my mistakes. It was definitely a little bit of a learning process as I went about figuring out what, would the, what the proper order was. So yeah, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and throw me a like and let me know down below if you ended up making something similar. Oh yeah, and before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more awesome content like this in the future whenever I make it. And once again, my name is House DM. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all later.